Today I'm going to share with you two small but important updates to the FormBot Upgrade Project Printer, which you can sort of see partly behind me, next to me. I know I said the previous video was going to be the last one, but I also said in that video that I needed to make some changes. Well, one change and one thing that I made a mistake on. So today we're going to cover those. I'll show you what I did to do it. Not necessarily the best way, but it's what I've done. So just to let you know that those things are done and this is how I did them. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Now in the previous video, which was supposed to be the last one but now it isn't, I did make quite a big mistake and I do apologize for that. When talking about the thermal fuse installation, I mentioned that it was solely for the purpose of preventing any hot spots on the heated bed where you would get separation between the bed heater itself and the actual bed platform plate. Because that heat couldn't sink into the aluminium, it would stay as a, like a local hotspot and could burn up in rare kind of extreme cases. And I said that you would need a large array of thermal fuses in order to achieve that level of safety, so I didn't install one. However, the error I made is that I hadn't correctly considered how that thermal fuse would be affected. So fortunately, I had a commenter correct me down below and I've pinned that comment so you can see it for yourself, but I thought I'd give a full update here to let you know what I've changed. So the real reason to fit an SSR is, well, still partly for the reasons that I said that would be one benefit, but I think really the main reason is that it prevents failure, like total burn up, in the event that the SSR fails in a situation where current continues to flow. So the bed would be continuing to heat up and the thermal fuse would trip. The reason the thermal fuse is important here is because when that SSR fails in a situation where current is flowing, there is no amount of software control that can stop that. You could fit maybe other SSRs in other places like before the input or stuff like that. So there would be other ways it could potentially have software control. But in reality, the best hardware solution here seems to be the thermal fuse. So let me show you how I fitted mine. Now, I'm not saying this is a guide. I've not fitted one before. I'm not absolutely certain that this is the best way to do it. But this is the way that I have implemented it in this case. The first thing I did was to add connectors to the ends of the thermal fuse. I did a couple of trials with different types of terminals to see which would fit, and I ended up on these red bullet terminals. So these can be disconnected if necessary, but largely I don't think I'm planning to. The reason to go with connectors rather than solder here is because it's a thermal fuse. If you heat up the thermal fuse too much during the soldering process, it will just trip and then it won't be functional anymore. So of course it's mounted underneath the bed right onto the surface of the heater. In order to get good thermal interface between the thermal fuse and the heater, I've used a small amount of thermal interface material. This is the same stuff that you would use on a computer between the CPU and the heatsink. It ensures optimal heat transfer between those two parts. Now, although this is a more thermally conductive material than air or some other things, it's still not very, very thermal conduct thermally conductive. It's not the best solution. It'd be nice to have a larger area of contact and all these sorts of things, but I think this will do for this application. We don't need precision. We just need it to be close-ish to the temperature of that bed surface. After adding the thermal interface material, I covered the whole thing in this high temperature silicone. This is the same stuff that I've put all the way around the bed to stop any edges coming loose. The high temperature silicone here works really well for a few reasons. A, it copes well with the temperature. Two, it's a great adhesive, so the thermal fuse should stay stuck to the bed surface and that silicon seems to grip that surface quite well. And because of its flexibility and malleability, we can use it to cover all the high voltage wires that are now sticking out of this fuse. I should be clear here that this is not probably the right way to mount the thermal fuse. This is how I did it in this case as a very DIY solution. The other thing is the bracket for the mains wires. Now these small little flimsy brackets that I had before, I was actually really unhappy with and I unfortunately didn't have time to fix that before the last episode and I obviously also needed a large functional printer in order to print them out. So I've printed out this nice long kind of arm if you like in PETG, same as all the other parts. And this just fits really snugly between the extrusion where the power supply is and to the 2020 smaller extrusion just by the SSR. It twists into one side, just like the other smaller clips, and then screws in at the other end. Not only is this solution much stronger and more rigid, and therefore able to protect those mains wires a lot better, 
it's also using zip ties, which means we don't have to worry about it coming loose potentially during vibration or motion or movement because, well, those are zip ties and they're holding it down super well. Being in the position it's in, it also retains that 50 millimeter clearance to other wires. So that should be reducing any interference between the alternating current in those live mains and the standard DC wires that are the other ones. Lastly, the 3D files are now going to be available on my website. So there'll be a link in the description below where you can find those. Obviously, these are not going to be files for the whole printer, rather the specific files for the upgrade. So all the printed parts that I've created for this machine are going to be available. So hopefully that was helpful, especially for those of you that have this printer and are following along with the upgrades. Don't forget to subscribe for more. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.